this week's episode, we're going to be building an ancient temple. So I'm going to kind of want to build this one, like all my other projects that are on the back burner. Uh, I always wanted to expand on that ancient city I was building for my jungle terrain. And one of the very first projects I did on this channel, if not the very first project, was a temple. And I kind of started it halfway through, uh, and it was kind of my first videos. Um, and I really wanted to do, you know, more structures for this ancient city. So I kind of wanted to do a different variant of that uh, temple, but kind of uh, have the same feeling. So it fits with all the other jungle terrain that I've built. Unfortunately, I built most of my terrain um, before I did the YouTube channel uh, for that jungle uh, ancient ruins. But I do have pictures of it on my Instagram page, the, the Plunder Den, if you want to see those. Uh, you've probably seen them in several pictures. I've used them in uh, things that I've posted already. Um, but I really wanted to expand on that, so I'll give a good opportunity to go through that. Now, this is mostly just built with foam and uh, just a little bit of balsa wood. Uh, but uh, the majority of this is uh, insulation foam and dollar store foam board. So, uh, you know, this is a pretty simple project. It's, it takes a little more... Uh, time to cut all the bricks and stuff out. Um, but if you have a Proxon cutter, it probably won't take that long. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to do a, a little simpler one. Uh, but I've learned a lot since I built that first temple, and I'm really happy how this one uh, turned out. So let's take a look at the finished product so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so we built a base too. I based it as well. So my uh, opportunity to try some new jungle uh, terrain products I had. So this is a temple right here. Really happy how this turned out. This is fully playable. Uh, it uh, separates into three sections. We'll take a look at that in a sec. I'm just going to turn it around for you. Uh, and I made some pathways uh, so you can play right through this terrain. Uh, and you can go right into the temple. Uh, so it's really, uh, really a, you know interesting piece. It'll be uh, lots of fun to gameplay with it here. Um, and then let's just take it apart. So I have a roof cap. And I kind of made a sunroof all the way through the whole thing. Uh, and we got the main uh, floor here. And then we got the uh, base floor. Now in here I got kind of like an obelisk. And actually I got this piece from Adepticon. Um, and I built it on uh, ancient ruins that I did earlier uh, with those statues and stuff. Uh, maybe I'll do a third one because I have one more of these. And they could be uh, kind of uh, objective markers, which would be kind of cool actually. Uh, for some gameplay in Blood and, uh, Blood and Plunder. So mostly I plan on using that for Blood and Plunder, but, um, you know, you could use it for other games as well. This would be great in a fantasy game, right? Uh, maybe you want to add it to a, a Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, but anyways, so that's kind of what we're going to be building here. We're going to be crafting it and painting it. Uh, and I only just show you the products I use for the basing, uh, but kind of the order I do it in. All right, so let's get down to the table. Uh, before that, if you like what we're doing here on the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's start painting and let's start crafting. <music> Okay, so let's start off with some of the materials I use for this project. Uh, we got some uh, dowels here. Uh, we got lots of balsa wood, different sizes and, and thicknesses. Uh, a lot of dollar store foam board. Uh, I just really just kind of went through some of my scraps kicking around. And I already cut a piece that I'm going to use for the base. Uh, we got lots of insulation foam. I kind of just cut it into strips. Um, and then we got uh, some regular foam uh, more balsa wood uh, that one's a little more rigid a little uh, tougher uh, balsa wood got all that from amazon that balsa wood so i started off by planning out what size i wanted this temple to be so i put a bunch of minis in in there to see if i had enough space in there uh, and just kind of measure it out on my base that i cut out and i was happy with that size uh, and uh, i figured i could get uh, two levels uh, on this uh, temple. So the previous temple I built was only a single level, but it had a staircase leading up to it. So this one's going to have a couple of different levels. So then I used the uh, kind of the second level to measure out uh, 
uh, really uh, traced it onto the base because that's where uh, I'm just going to texturize that by just pulling the paper up. Um, but I also want to measure the thickness of the walls. So I kind of just trace that on there so I know what size uh, to, uh, um, you know, to build from one wall to the next. Um, so I kind of just draw it right on there. I find that's the easiest way. I don't have any particular measurements. I just kind of cut a base piece and then just kind of fit a a rectangle on there whatever fit in there and that's really kind of how i uh planned it out uh, so these are the uh, walls i have them all cut up for the top level and the bottom level um you can see that there's a doorway opened and i kind of wanted to have a slanted door so the examples i looked at mayan and aztec temples they had this kind of a it wasn't a straight up and down doorway so I kind of wanted to reflect that into this piece. And it's a little different than the other one I built. And I, I kind of want to have it like a ancient city, so a bunch of different structures. So I'm, I'm trying to make it quite different than the, the previous one. So then I cut it out. And you can see I just used my uh, hobby knife there uh, just to skewer the paper a little bit. And then I can peel it back. Uh, and I'm going to use that tinfoil ball, and I'm going to texturize that um, square or rectangle there. What's well, a square? Uh, and uh, just to give it kind of like it's just concrete to lay down there or a stone that's laid down there. I'm not going to add uh, anything uh, tricky on the bottom there. I just wanted to make this fairly easy. And I'm just showing you that I'm going to do uh, one side of all these as well. The side facing out is going to have bricks on it, so I can uh, keep the paper on it to keep the strengths. And then the other side is the inside, uh, I'm going to uh, texturize with that uh, tinfoil ball. And you can see that uh, I'm already planning out the second floor. I kind of wanted to have an open all the way through to the roof. Uh, kind of like a uh, like shine light all the way into the bottom where I'm going to put that obelisk. And then uh, I use hot glue. I usually use hot glue to put the original structure together. It's just faster. Uh, I don't want to, I guess I'm just impatient. <laughs> don't want to wait for that white glue to dry. So I just kind of put hot glue on there and slap it all together. I'm going to cover it all anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So then I moved on to insulation foam. Uh, that's a uh, half inch insulation foam. Uh, and it's great. You just cut it into, into strips. Uh, and then you can, you can see that I've made squares and then I've made, uh, triangle so i'm kind of making different shapes here that i'm going to use so just some basic shapes so then i moved into a flatter square these are going to be kind of like the uh, stones on the outside the uh, brick lay on the bottom uh, and i have different sizes i got long ones square ones and, and little small ones that i cut um this is uh just dollar store foam board i cut it into strips uh and i just did uh you can see i did little bricks as well that i'm going to do some details in the middle part with so I had small and large bricks. So this is a big pile <laughs> of all the stuff I've cut. I just used my box cutter. Uh, again, this probably took me maybe 30, 40 minutes to cut all that up. Uh, and then I threw it in my, my lovely coffee tin. Now, I didn't put the white dollar store foam board ones in here. I'm just going to use a tinfoil ball. Once I glue them all on, uh, and I'm just going to uh, put texture on with a tinfoil ball afterwards. So I just I just put the insulation foam in there. That just kind of gives it a smoother edges and makes it look more like stone, uh, opposed to the uh, stark edges from when I cut it with the box cutter. So I just wanted to uh, change that. Uh, so I, I decided to go with a standard pattern with the larger blocks along the bottom, and then just kind of filled in the corners with those larger blocks. Use tacky glue to glue all this on. So I'll do a, a couple of little stages here of uh, me putting it on here. So you can see this is kind of the pattern I decided to go with. Uh, and you can see I used that uh, stronger, rigid balsa wood uh, in the inside. Mainly, it just gives it strength so the, so the, the side walls don't kind of cave into on, on with each other. This keeps everything nice and straight. So I added a, a rim of that inside. And it's a good detail you can paint inside the, uh, the temple. So I kind of went with that. Uh, and that's going to give it some extra strength. And you can kind of see the brick pattern I'm going with. Uh, the references I saw of Mayan and Aztec temples, this is kind of, they just had a brick bottom and they had more decorative designs as they went up the levels. Some of them are actually quite elaborate. There were like three or four levels. Um, we're only going to do uh, a mid-level and an uh, upper roof. But you can see I kind of, uh, I made them both flush, uh, but I'm going to add this rim of balsa wood all the way around the base of the top level. 
And why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to glue those um, those triangles that we cut. Uh, and they're going to be uh, some of the details that I've added. I'm going to be adding to the temple. And then I want them to overlap so that this, this sits nicely on the bottom. And you can see I'm going to add some balsa wood into around the opening that I done there. Just frame it out, just like you do with windows. And that also gives it some nice strength too as well. And you can see I've uh, done a lot of texturizing on the bottom of that one. I took the paper off the bottom as well because that would be the ceiling, right? So, so these are the little triangles that we cut. Um, and really, I'm going to glue it on the tip here. Uh, I'm going to have these ones facing, a row of them facing this way on the bottom. So you got kind of an overhang. Uh, and that's what's going to support it uh, uh, onto the base. So that's how the two pieces hook into each other, just, just the way we arrange the bricks like this. And you can see we have a nice little overlap, and it sits nicely onto the bottom part. Now, I had to add that balsa wood because you want to go a little bit further because I made it flush with the, with the bottom past the bricks that I already glued on, right? So that way it sits on there. That's why I added that strip. So you can see how it looks like on the bottom. They're all facing out. It's a nice detail. You can see there's a little bit of a ridge there. That's all I need for it to sit on top of the, of the base. So I'm starting to add a little bit of details on the inside. I decided to brick the inside of the doorways. I'm just going to do a little detail above and then on the sides uh, like this. So we're going to do that on the inside. Just add a little detail on the inside. I'm pretty well going to keep the walls plain uh, and just paint them. So then on the top level, we're going to go the opposite way. Uh, and this actually kind of uh, uh, resembles... Uh, if you look, play Blood and Plunder, the native faction, a lot of their headdresses actually have a similar design to it. So I kind of wanted to carry that over into the temple. Um, and I saw a similar design of a Mayan temple that used that same kind of design. So this, uh, I, I don't know, it's, it looks like kind of like waves. It's a really standard uh, uh, Aztec uh, design. They use it on a lot of different things. They use it on tattoos and... Uh, you name it, all sorts of different uh, wall designs. So I wanted to carry that over into the upper level. So that's what I use those dollar store foam board bricks. So then I got some beads. Um, originally, I was going to do the dowels that I showed you at the beginning, but I decided to, uh, I like the way the beads look better. Um, and I kind of made a, a like an inlay of design in the, the uh, just above the top there. And you can see I added another strip of balsa wood just below those beads. That just kind of finishes everything off, and it'll be a detail that I can paint later. Um, I want to add a blue stripe in there. So then for the very top, I just cut a piece that fits in that opening that I have at the top. Uh, you can see I framed an opening because I want an opening all the way to the top of the roof. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have to have uh, the other pieces I'm going to glue on. This is the front facing of the build of the temple here. And uh, it, we just want it to overlap because that's how it's going to sit on the roof. So we have the one piece that goes flush right inside of it. And then we're going to add that other piece that's on the back. And, uh, and this is kind of what it looks like after I'm done with it already. So I added on there. You can see I added some more of those beads. I had some triangle pieces. I had a piece of costume jewelry I had for that matches some of the other temples I built. I made a little detail in the back. So then you got kind of like this overlap. So you can see it fits nice in there. And then that overlaps so it doesn't obviously fall through. So I'm happy with that overall design. Uh, looks pretty good. Um, you know, I, I also have a little, you can see a little circular piece that I got, uh, some hobby wood. And there's that, uh, I decided I'm going to do another shelf on top. Um, but it's going to be triangles again to match everything else. So now I start working on some of the details for the bottom. I had some stones left over from the river project. Um, I already cut up and I have some palm trees here. These palm trees uh, all were purchased uh, from Amazon. I bought them in bulk. You can get quite a bit from Amazon. Um, and I got to clean them up though because they're they got a lot of mold lines on them and stuff. So I'm going to trim those up and use some sandpaper if I have to to clean some of them uh, of those mold lines up. So this is that uh, obelisk thing I got from Adepticon. It was in that fantasy crate. Uh, and I already used one on Ancient Ruins before, so now i got a second one. Uh, and when you buy those bulk trees, you get smaller versions of the palm trees, which are great because you can use them for bushes. So 
I just took them off the base and uh, I'm going to use these as bushes. Okay, so now we got the uh, mid-level all completed. Our top is fabricated. You can see I added some more of those triangles to the top and that costume jewelry in the middle of that circular wooden uh, hobby piece I have. I've kind of started laying out some of the stones where I'd like them on the base. Kind of made two outer walls, kind of, with those stones. And the stones are good for uh, having places to glue your trees into as well. So then I moved on to the black craft paint, folk art craft paint, and I've covered the entire temple. Uh, this is when I decided at this point uh, that there's not enough strengths in the center there. So I'm going to have to add two pieces of balsa wood in there just to give it a little more strength um, in, in here. Uh, and that'll give it uh, enough strength so it keeps it uh, straight and true. I don't want it to start getting uh, warped or crooked because then it won't fit to the top after I spent all that time measuring it all out. Uh, that balsa wood will keep it nice and straight. So I'm just showing you all the pieces after I put the black craft paint on it. Now the base, uh, make sure you do the bottom as well and that'll counteract any potential warping. Uh, there wasn't any, but I just did it just in case. Uh, and then you can see I did the stems of the palm trees because we're going to get rid of that ugly brown that they have on there already. And then we're going to move on to drywall compound because I want to add some texture to the base. So it's not just a flat piece of, uh, you know, dollar store foam board. We can actually make it look like some kind of mud. And don't forget uh, to use some water when you're using the drywall compound. I use this little cheap dollar store putty knife that I got. Uh, and the water just allows you to spread it out faster. Uh, it's kind of bunched up when you take it out of the container but the water helps you spread it around so you can see this is uh, uh i applied it it's a little pink still because i just finished applying it uh it dries white and that's when you know it's all complete and ready to go and then you can start adding uh, paint we're gonna cover it again with black craft paint uh, and you can see that those balsa wood pieces i put on that top as well i'm just showing you both sides kind of what it looks like after i've added the drywall compound so this would be nice and uh, strong now with the added uh, addition of those two pieces of balsa wood. Uh, and that I'm happy with that roof now. It has a little more uh, strength to it. So then, like I said, we're going to move on to the black craft paint. And we're going to hit all the areas we just added on there. So the drywall compound and these uh, two uh, balsa wood pieces. Now also, uh, when you... Paint with uh, black craft paint, it does shrink, so you, you got to get into, I got so many little details on there, it, I had to go over it a couple times to make sure that I got them all filled in. And you can see our, our base is nice and strong now with, uh, with that uh, craft paint over top of that drywall compound. Uh, everything is covered, and uh, we're ready for our next base color, which is a uh, real brown. Another folk art craft paint, and we're going to cover all that. I'm going to use a big brush uh, for these uh, early stages because really I just I'm covering the whole thing. So it, you can see I left some black sticking out. Um, you still want to have shadows in there. Um, so I didn't cover it completely, but uh, you know, just same as I always do, a little bit of a dry brush with that big brush over top. Um, so I have some black details underneath, but uh, mostly is a real brown. Hit the stems of the trees and this little obelisk, and now I'm moving on to. Uh, our uh, bark brown. This is our lighter brown color and these are all colors you're familiar with. Again adding all those earth tones that I like to add to all these pieces. It gives a good uh, base color uh, to all these pieces. Um, and it's a good starting point to start adding colors over the top. Um, so we're going to do uh, something a little different um, this time. Uh, I'm going to use uh, I have a different color there called raw sienna. Uh, it's another uh, folk art paint. I'm going to do the, the, the temple itself in this color. Uh, but with the base, I'm going to still continue on using um, uh, the Pablo. So where the drywall compound is, because it gives a nice mud look. Um, so I, I'm going to kind of use that on a few of those places. Uh, but normally I would have added the uh, Pablo to the entire thing, but I'm not. I'm just going to do it on the, the drywall compound. And the rest I'm going to use that raw sienna. So you can see it's more of a yellow tone. Uh, I'm kind of uh, going to skip some of the stone colors that I normally use. And I'm just going to kind of use this camel instead. And then we're really going to lightly put it on to the stonework in here. Uh, and so I'm going to have like a, a darker stone. And I've done that when I did my stone painting tutorial. 
And I kind of said you could just leave it at that stage. Well, this is a project where I've decided just to leave it. So you can see I just added a light bit of camel to it all. Uh, and I've already had that yellow tone because I went with the raw sienna instead, the craft paint. Uh, and that way I didn't have to use any of the miniature paints. And uh, just stuck with the, uh, the cheaper craft paints. Uh, and I, I like this. It's a nicer, darker stone color. Uh, and you know, I've been playing around with my formula of the stonework. So I moved on to adding some uh, orange, this is Pablo, uh, and really it's just some colored details, like there's some a little bit of paint left on this temple. Like these originally would have had a lot of colors, I know a lot of the ruins that they've found now, of course they've been there for hundreds or not thousands of years, and they're, all the paint is long gone, but uh, they would have originally had some decorative colors to them. Uh, I like to use a teal blue and the orange, which kind of matches the other uh, terrain pieces I built for this uh, uh, ruined uh, city. Uh, and that's kind of wanted to do these uh, triangle pieces. I'm going to add that detail in there. So I just added a little bit so you can see it also in the triangles and on the very top. So it just adds a little bit of brightness to the temple. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the time that Blood and Plunder takes place is... You know, probably about 100 years after most of these uh, huge empires uh, uh, fell. So I would think they have a little bit of the detail still left on them. Uh, so I added a few metallics on here. We've got a copper and a gold speed paint. And uh, we're just going to do some of those uh, details on the very top. All these uh, little beads I put in there, I'm going to do on a copper color. And then that uh, same with the other temple, that uh, jewelry piece there I got from Michael's. Now I'm going to put it as a gold piece. And of course we're going to add washes and stuff on it afterwards so it doesn't look so bright. But I just wanted to add a metallic element to it. So this is after it's done. Uh, and you can see I added that teal blue uh, to it. Um, and it really adds to the, uh, you know, the colors that they are, are familiar in that area at the time. And so I kind of carried it on over into the uh, temple here. And you see I've kind of just put it on some areas where it looks like it's all chipping and falling off. And in actuality, probably 100 years, most of the paint would have come off. But, you know, just for aesthetic looks here, we're going to add a little different colors to it. I'm just showing you that I hit the camel on that obelisk and also on the uh, tree stems as well. That's actually the only color I added to the tree stems. I didn't add any more color to it after that. Uh, it came out good. And you can see I did the interior with that camel too. It's got a nice look to it. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So these are some of the paints I'm going to use, uh, like Sand Golem, Hardened Leather, Grim Black, Skeleton Horde, Agrax or Shader, uh, and some Rust um, it, that I'm going to add for weather this entire piece. Yeah, there's the Rust right there, Army Painter. Uh, we're going to use that on the metallics. So I'm just going to kind of use that all over this temple. Uh, to uh, weather it. So this is after I've added all those details. Uh, and you can see it's uh, changed it quite a bit. Uh, I really like that uh, those combinations uh, of colors. And I would have to say I probably use the speed paints more. Uh, the only one I kind of still use quite a bit of is the Agrax Earth Shader. Um, but Skeleton Horde I, I don't use as much. I like the Sand Golem actually is better. Uh, speed paint by Army Painter. It just looks better and it's thicker. So we got green skin, uh, we got uh, angel green, uh, commando green, uh, and this is going to really uh, fix those leaves on those uh, palm trees. Uh, and really because they're, uh, you know, they look plasticky, so you got to cover them up with all this paint. And I'm just showing you there's some green speed paint there. Uh, I'm going to use that uh, as the uh, moss and stuff that's growing, or the algae or whatever from the, although like it's a rainforest that this is in, right? So, uh, and we had some sterling mud. Uh, and at the very end, the stone cover, we're going to lighten it up a little bit with the mummy robe um, and to hit some of that stonework. Okay, so that was all the paint job done. We're all completed. You can see I added those greens in there. It gives it a kind of an algae look, and it really finishes off the look uh, of the entire temple. It really looks like an aged temple now that's in the jungle. And that's what I was shooting for. So we're going to have to move into uh, working on the base. So now it's time. The trees are all done. The obelisk is done. The bushes are done. Um, you can see after we painted them, I'm happy with that. Uh, and now we're going to move into some of the uh, terrain pieces. So 
So this, this is like it's a cheap dollar store uh, moss here. Um, just a different uh, sorted uh, of materials. I always use this uh, battleground uh, from Army Painter as my kind of my pathways. Um, we got some uh, jungle uh, flocking here. These are new. I got these at Century Box when I was down in Calgary. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try those out, those really uh, those palm tree leaves. And a lot of these are from Gamer's Grass uh, and then All Game Terrain, uh, these tufts. So we've got a combination of three different companies, uh, products here. And this will give us a really good look uh, assortment of plant life. Um, I'm just showing you I'm going to use that hot glue gun to glue the trees in, the obelisk. Uh, and then I'm going to use white tacky glue for all the other terrain pieces. So this is after I've added it. I really like those palm leaves. They're so realistic. Um, that looked like uh, stungs you'd see in bushes in, in the jungle. I'm um, really happy with this assortment of uh, products. Uh, and it came out uh, really good. And it added with that cheap dollar store uh, moss. It actually came out great. Really uh, liked that a lot. All right, so let's get down to the game table. We got some pirates uh, invading this uh, uh, island with an ancient city on it, with ancient ruins. Uh, so I got assorted, uh, actually a lot of these minis are from the new Rays, uh, Rays of Black, so all sorts of different ones that I built. And you got uh, Blackbeard, uh, Black Caesar, uh, and you got uh, Anne Bonnie on there, a whole bunch of different ones that I uh, that I took. And uh, assorted, uh, you know, pirates and sea dogs and such. So here's a, some of the other terrain pieces, uh, jungle terrain pieces, and this is, I just wanted to show you the temple with all the other pieces that I've already built. Um, I'm really uh, happy with this. Uh, I kind of want to build maybe one more structure and have kind of three, so there'll be one more in the future that I'm going to build. I'm not sure which, which kind I'm going to build, but we're running out of room on this island. <laughs> uh, it's pretty full, and that's what I like. I like, I like a dense game table. So let's take a, a closer look at this temple here, all done. Take the top off. Uh, you can see that that skylight goes all the way down to the obelisk. I put a little bit of a little bit of uh, grass on the top of it, figuring that it got some sunlight, um, and uh, you know just with some added extra details on it. But I really uh, liked the way this temple turned out. It's you can see the other one in the background there. So there's a difference between the two. They look like two different structures, which is what I wanted. It completes the overall look. All right, so that's this project complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.